Why you gotta be so miserable, huh? So let's start this video with things that make you go, hmm. Perfect garden soil mix right here with pine bark and some compost. I put a little hole in the bag to make sure it's what I wanted. Didn't put a hole in this bag. And uh, came out of the same kind of bag. Uh, obviously very different. I don't really know what this is. All right, mixing up my weird soil, mixing up my weird soil. <laughs> Mixing up my weird soil. Welcome to HortTube. In this video, I'm gonna be planting uh, several containers, a couple shade containers, a few things for the uh, sun. Uh, the first couple containers I'm planting are just one piece uh, in the container. I'm gonna use this uh, Safari Sunrise Aloe that the Southern Living Plant Collection um, has. This is a, uh, a fantastic flowering uh, aloe. Uh, this is one I'm gonna to have to give some, uh, some winter protection to. It's hardy in nine to 11. And so it's a good idea to have this one in the container. I'll bring it up on the back porch the worst of the winter. I'll bring it in and use it as a house plant. Uh, and I'm just going to put it uh, in this beautiful container that I had gotten from Michael Carr earlier. This one's got the lava, you know, all the way to the bottom. It's got some purple green um, hues in it. The next one that I'm only using one of in a container is this Diplodenia. I had one of these uh, out here last year. If you follow in the channel last year, Diplodenia is super, super easy. It's like a mandevilla, but more of a, uh, sh it's kind of a shrub formed mandevilla. So you don't really need anything for it to climb on. This is one of those that uh, you can cut in half in the middle of summer and uh, it'll just keep on, it'll just keep on getting it. Um, needs to be fertilized a couple times during the, uh, couple times during the season with something that's a uh, slow release. I have this rectangular uh, container that uh, I put a spike in last year and a few other things. Uh, container looked great last year. The spike has survived uh, the winter. Um, I didn't do anything to protect it, honestly. It normally would have died uh, during a winter here in zone 7B, but it did not and it looks great. And I'm just gonna underplant it uh, with a few things. I've got this uh, Gonfarina, uh right here. You can see that beautiful uh, kind of purplish pink little button flowers on the top of it. This thing will bloom uh, all summer uh, pretty easily. And then I've got uh, some of this tattoo blueberry vinca. Uh, I've used, used it in the front yard as well. So just a nice dark purple. It tends to, um, this one holds up really well for me. I, I have problems with some older vinca varieties uh, in this uh, soil here in my area, but some of the newer varieties seem to be resistant to some of those root rot issues. And then I actually have a couple of uh, variegated uh, vinca that I rooted last year. So I took, just took the plants that I had last year. You can do this with a lot of things. You know, you can go and, and uh, some of the things you're purchasing this year, you can root them and then protect them through the winter and then reuse them the following spring. I uh, highly recommend that. This container is still full of soil from last year. I'm just gonna take some of it out to put a little bit of new soil for these new things. And I'm actually just gonna blend even that back into the mix over here. Next up, I have another one of these beautiful containers from Michael Carr that has that uh, lava overflow all the way down to the bottom with the, it's kind of, this one's kind of, teal i guess with a little bit of purple in it uh i'm going to use this uh blue clarity blue uh, dianella has kind of a blue green foliage on it i had one of these in a container in front of the building over here last year it was absolutely just fantastic uh super low maintenance uh, grass i already filled this container up to the level where it was sitting there perfect i'm putting that toward the back i'm going to use uh nasturtium and of course nasturtium flowers but I really love the foliage on it too, that variegation. I uh, hope you can see right there that's in that uh, foliage. I'm using a sage uh, in the container. I've got one blooming uh, back here that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it's just uh, beautiful beyond culinary. For, that sage is more than just something for culinary use. Uh, I've got some of uh, uh, the gold sedum that I've just have in a container left over from last year. And I'm just breaking pieces of it off and reusing it. Once you buy this, you really don't need to buy it again. Uh, it pretty much uh, 
uh, allows you to uh, do what I'm doing, which is just break off pieces from wherever it is and plant it in new places. And then I've got a peach color uh, verbena uh, that I'm going to use. This is a little low growing verbena. It'll bloom most of the summer, but it's a peach color. Should hang over the edge a little bit. So, boom. <laughs> So this is the last one for this video, and I think it's going to be uh, my favorite. Uh, comment down below with which one of these is uh, your favorite. We're gonna walk around in just a second and uh, take a look. Um, I put a lot of containers in here already this season, and I still have two or three more to go, but this is one of my all-time uh, favorite plants. This is a uh, soft caress Mahonia. You see just the perfect uh, texture on this plant. It does bloom in the wintertime with the uh, yellow flowers that the, uh, the pollinators love, but um, I'm mainly growing it uh, just for this texture in this uh, part shaded space, this, this area that I'm in. Uh, get some direct sun on it, but by one or two o'clock, it's just bright light uh, over here. I'm using a couple of these Rex begonias. These are Jurassic Park uh, Rex begonias. Really striking, really, really striking. Uh, and then I'm using uh, a few coleus. Coleus have a similar color to that Rex begonia and then one gold uh, coleus uh, in the container as well. So here we go. This palm in this broken container with the uh, begonias I did in an earlier video using some of that uh, sedum. And you can see that sedum slowly but surely will come down over that broken part of that container and cover it up. I'll have a uh, all of my containers back on these steps pretty soon. The first one being uh, the one I just did. Um, that, there's that Gonfarina right here. And this will bloom all summer. So this one will just have, you know, variegated foliage. It'll have that, you know, obviously that spike is doing what the spikes do. And, uh, and then the uh, Vinca in there as well. I'll have these steps looking better uh, soon. Here's some other containers. I got to flip some pansies um, out of these, this is black. Uh, pansy that I've shown several times. I can't stop taking photos of it. It's just the coolest. But these containers are a bit busy now. I've got to get on um, replacing some of the things um, that are in those that I planted last fall. And here's the uh, here's the one with the uh, Mahonia in it, with the soft caress Mahonia and the uh, Rex begonias. I think as time goes on, maybe not today, but as time goes on, I think that'll be my favorite of the bunch as those uh, begonias get larger. Uh, here's another palm that I have uh, underplanted with some pansies. I'll have to flip those pansies out um, once it gets a little hotter. It's super cool outside for whatever reason. You can see all this racemes from this oak tree that's over the top of it right here. Just drops junk in these. I got to clean that up. I got to clean that up. Okay, uh, let's move over to the uh, first ones uh, that I put in. This was another one that I did in a container planting video recently. The variegated boxwood, looking good. I treat, treat, in the process of tree forming or making, I'm gonna make a three ball topiary out of that boxwood eventually. And then coming back here, I don't know that this is where these containers are going, but it's just where they're sitting so that we can see them. I think the blue Dianella looks great in that container. The verbena will uh, weep down over the edge. The uh, sedum will weep down over the edge. Uh, the sage is right there. Let me show you the sage in bloom. Uh, walk over to that real quick and show it to you. But this same sage from seed from last year, uh, Salvia officinalis. Look at that thing. Fantastic for the pollinators. Uh, of course, it has culinary purposes as well. Purposes as well, but it's just a beautiful plant. Here it is, and that, that's one that's I did from seed last year. So that's the second year, uh, second beginning of spring. Uh, the uh, Diplodenia is in that container. This is where I left this thing sitting last year, and I'm probably gonna move it somewhere else. I think I have another good spot for it. Uh, these will take a little bit of light shade. They'll do okay in a little bit of light shade. That's where I'm gonna move it to, but uh, they probably prefer more sun than I'm going to end up giving it. This container, um, some people will like that barrel container. That narrowing at the top makes it very difficult to empty it out at the end of the season uh, or the next season. And so this is what I had in this container last year and it was, it was a bear to get you know, that soil out of there. I didn't take all the soil out, I'm reusing. I reuse a lot of soil, but I replaced probably a third 
to a half of the soil that was in that container. And it was a bit, like I said, it was a bear to get it out. And last but not least, this is that Safari Sunrise uh, Aloe. Uh, you can see what the flower spikes will look like uh, on this aloe when it blooms. But beautiful plant, um, breaks pretty easy while you're in the process of planting it, but not, not really that big of a deal. And I planted this one kind of higher in the container. Uh, just I don't want any water sitting around the crown of an aloe, so it would prefer to be um, drier than other things out here. And so the other containers, uh, you know, I have them sunk down, you know, an inch, inch and a half around the edge just to give a reservoir for water. When you come around here with a water hose, if everything's right up to the top of the container, the water just spills off the side. But I give that reservoir, and I did not do that uh, on the aloe. I kind of want some of the water to run away from it. Uh, when it gets uh, when it gets ir irrigated. So again, comment down below with which of the uh, containers that I did today. Just the simple containers with just one item in them, or the you know. I, now that I'm looking at this uh, Dianella, uh, I kind of I'm kind of really uh, drawn to it. Uh, of course, these are going to fill out quite a bit. I'm going to fertilize these containers uh, today, and then you know when you're trying to get the most you can out of flowering things for the summer, I'll come back uh, later and fertilize them again. I do not fertilize once a week with any kind of liquid fertilizer or anything like that. I'll, I'll use flower tone on them. Uh, I put them in the best soil possible and uh, I'll come back in you know, a month, month and a half and, and do that flower tone again. Uh, thanks for watching the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, you can follow along with the progress that I'm making in this uh, landscape in Raleigh, North Carolina.